I want you to please open your Bibles in Mark chapter 6. And we are starting the series that has been announced uh, uh, about acceleration. And, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be talking to you today and, and next week. And we have another five speakers all lined up. We have Pastor Alejandro Arias. He's going to be speaking about acceleration in Breakthrough. And, uh, and then after that, we, we'll, we'll have, in some Sundays, we'll have one speaker in the 9 o'clock, one speaker in the 10.30, different speakers. You can come to both if you want. If, you, if, we, if we can feed everybody, you can come to both and, and get, get a bit more, you know, you know, in one and then another. And so it's going to be really great over the next, I don't know, maybe five weeks. Let's see how far we're going to go with this. It's going to be awesome because I believe God wants to impart something to you. God wants to impart to you a faith for you to believe that those things that have been, that have been kind of delayed or, or things you've been praying for that haven't quite had, yet happened, that they're going to happen, that God is going to speed things up and he's, gonna, he's going to accelerate things for you. Amen. How many of you need some acceleration? <laughs> How many of you feel a bit stuck in some areas? You need God to come through quickly. Yes. While you're in the right place, this is the right message for you. Mark chapter 6, verse 45 it says, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. And when evening came, they were, the boat was in the middle of the sea and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining and rowing for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the waters, and he would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost, and they cried out, but immediately, they saw him and they traveled, but immediately talked with them and said, be of good cheer, it is I, don't be afraid. And the wind, and then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure, and they marveled. I want you to know something that <laughs> the real Jesus, he will always marvel, he'll always surprise, he's, he's such a powerful Jesus. I've, I've preached so many times from these passages throughout the years, not just here, but in other places, and and I tell you what, I keep coming back to this passage. It still, it still feeds my spirit. I still marvel. I'm still amazed. And, and even not long ago, I, I shared a message right here in the church that I entitled, Storms, Ghosts, You and Jesus. Storms, Ghosts, You and Jesus. And during that time, we, we learned three things from, from this passage. Number one, the invisible entities that are against us in this life. You know, what you see with your eyes is not all that there is to see. There are invisible entities working against you in this life. Secondly, we saw how sometimes we come short of solutions because we rely on our own power. The disciples, they came short of getting to the other side. They did everything in their own power, but it wasn't enough. Thirdly, the, the miraculous, we, the, the other thing we learned was the miraculous and limited power of Jesus in any circumstance. Now today, I want us to go back to this passage and observe again the dynamics of what happened there in that stormy night. You see, the disciples had put so much effort into crossing the sea. And after nine hours of, of, of rowing, I mean, they had left when the sun was setting. And at three o'clock, between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning, they still find themselves straining at rowing, using every bit of energy in their bodies, trying to get to the other side. And they were still right in the middle of the sea. And, uh, and um, they, they were going nowhere fast. They had, they had no momentum. They had no forward motion. They were stuck. They were exhausted. They were disoriented. Have you ever been there? Have you ever experienced maybe the frustration of having no results in spite of your best efforts? No return for, for your, the investment of your best strength and ability. Have you ever felt stuck and able to get traction or moving forward? Have you ever been caught maybe in a delay, struggling instead of flourishing? Have you ever hit an impasse and found yourself nowhere near your goals and your dreams? Maybe, maybe 2018 wasn't that great of a year for you. 
Maybe it, it was, maybe in some ways you kind of felt like, well, I didn't get any better coming, coming the end of the year. Things haven't really happened for me. I've tried what I knew to do. I've, I've you know, and, and still nothing has really happened. Have you ever been there frustrated, maybe discouraged, despondent because I, I didn't get anywhere fast. Nothing has changed in my circumstances. You know, maybe you prayed this prayer like I have prayed in, in Psalm 143, verse 7, where David, David prayed this prayer and said, Lord, answer me speedily. I, I, I highlighted that word, speedily. How many of you have prayed? I mean, the prayers, you can go like, okay, God, you can take your time whenever you're available. If you're not too busy with problems in Afghanistan and here and there, in your time, just, but there are times when you go like, God, I need now, speedily, quickly. How many of you, right now, you need a quick miracle? Okay, you know, answer me, speedily, Lord, my spirit fails, my courage fails, my strength fails. What I need to do is failing. But Lord, do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit, like God, you know. That's where I'm heading. So I need you to intervene quickly. I don't know if you, whether you've been there, but, but struggle, 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 and getting nowhere fast. That was what the disciples were going through. You know, I don't know whether maybe you, you can identify with that, or, or perhaps you're there today, and, and that's you, or, or you've been at that, you know, in that situation at some stage. I've got good news for you, because the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you know, we're entering into a season of acceleration. And when I say the Lord spoke to my heart, I mean, you, you've known me. I mean, I've been the pastor of this church for nine years, and I don't come here and I say, well, the Lord said this very often, but when I do say something like that, you better believe me that I, I've heard from God. And, and, and like two years ago, I said, the, the Lord spoke to me, this is going to be here to flourish. And you know what? We had, throughout the year, we had so many testimonies, so many people come to me and said, indeed, I have flourished. Right at the end of the year, I got testimonies, people that, last year, I didn't, I didn't start the year with a specific message and a specific word. I'll tell you why, because I didn't hear it. I didn't get, God didn't say one way or the other, this, I, I just preached and, and I just, throughout the year and so on and so forth. But in the middle of last year, I felt the Lord speaking to me, starting to speak to me clearly and saying, you know what, get ready. Next year is going to be a year of acceleration. Areas where you've been stuck, areas where my people have been stuck in this house, you know what, I'm going to speed things up. I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to make it happen. Things that would take a long time, suddenly they're going to happen quickly. And you know what, I, I love those words I, and I... But I always like confirmation. I like confirmation, number one, from the Word itself. If the Word itself, if the Bible, God's Word says it, then, then it's just not just a, a nice slogan. Then it's, it's a biblical principle. It's in the Bible. And guess what? The Bible actually talks about it a lot. And we're going to be spending like four or five weeks talking about it. At least five weeks. Because the Bible actually talks a lot about it. Right here in this passage that we've read, you know, Jesus himself. Look at how Jesus came onto the scene. While the disciples are struggling, they're, what a contrast. Because when Jesus came, he came, number one, walking on the waters. I mean, who needs a boat when he can walk on the waters? And I tell you what, I, I believe God is trying to open our eyes that we... We're the kind of people that rely more and more on what God can do, what God can offer, the resources of heaven, of His power, than anything else. Amen? So that Jesus came walking on the water, and the Bible says there in verse 48, it says that he would, have, he would have passed them by. I mean, Jesus is a fast Jesus. You know, there's the disciples like, and Jesus is coming so fast, He would have passed them by. And, uh, and, and, and John 6.21, actually speaking about this passage, says this, Then they willingly received him into the boat. And immediately, everyone say immediately. immediately. How long does immediately to ha take to happen? Yeah. Boom. You know, just like that. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. In the preceding verses, we have GPS precision of where the boat is. The boat is three or four miles. The boat is in the middle of the sea. The Bible actually describes us, tells us where it is. But the Bible says that the willing received him into the boat, wouldn't you? I mean, you're in trouble. There comes Jesus. And the Bible says that boat, middle of the sea, but immediately boat is at the land. 
Boat is not in the middle of the sea. Boat is not three or four miles in <laughs> the boat is at the land where they were going. They were going, but they got there without going. Do you understand that? No. So don't worry. No, no, that's faith. Faith does not engage reason. Faith is of the heart. With the heart, man believes. Amen. So you believe. I mean, Jesus is, I mean, does that sound like acceleration? Come on, talk to me today. I have three, I have to preach in three services today, okay? I still have one more service to preach today. You have to do better than the first service, okay? Come on, help me preach here today. Amen. Come on. Don't go like, go like, yeah, acceleration. That's me. I'll take that in Jesus' name. Come on. Um, does that sound like acceleration? Is it in the Bible that Jesus an accelerated Jesus? Well, he comes walking on the walls. He would have passed them by, and then he comes into the boat, and the boat, boom, is at the land where they're going. Like in an instant of time, in 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 you know just you know you just kind of boom, and they're at, at the the Bible says, well, Jesus having rested and being very strong, went to the boat, got into the boat, and said. Listen, boys, this is, I'll show you how this is done. <laughs> Quickly, no problem. He got there in no time. Jesus worked out in the gym. No. Bible says immediately the boat was at the lens. Like, oh, we've got here already? 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 <laughs> Come on. Already? Hey, man, you know, we've heard all about the speed of sound, you know, hy- you know hypersonic uh, kind of, uh, you know, we, we've, we've all heard about the, the speed of light. You know, scientists tell us that the universe is expanding at the speed of light. But I want you to know something. The Bible describes the speed of God. The speed of God. Just think about it. The speed of God. In actual fact, in, in the English language, in the, old, in the old days, when someone was embarking on a long journey, uh, they would always say, God speed. You know, it's sort of an old expression. God speed, you know. The astronauts, you know, the guys that went to the moon. Yeah, how many of you have ever seen Louis Armstrong is about to take off and, and everyone in Houston saying, you know, God speed, you know. <laughs> but you know what? My prayer for you, my wishes for you is not God speed. I wish you the speed of God in 2019. May you discover the speed of God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The speed of God. Touch someone next to you and say, the speed of God for you in 2019. Hallelujah. So I felt the Lord speak to my heart that we're coming into a different season in 2019. I believe that 2019 is going to be a year of acceleration. The Lord said to me, he said, expect immediately, suddenly, and instantly. Everyone say immediately, suddenly, instantly, acceleration, the speed of God in 2019. But you know what? Like any promise or any prophecy, it has to be believed to become active. You have to believe. This is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell my people that I, I'm going to do this thing, that they're entering into a season of acceleration, but they have to believe it. This is not for the skeptical. This is not for the doubtful. This is for the faith-filled people that say, yeah, I believe that. I believe the Lord spoke. I believe He spoke in His Word. I believe He spoke to my pastor. And I take it. I receive it. It's my year of acceleration. In Jesus' name. You know, I, 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 every, when the Lord speaks to me, I always ask for confirmation. Because the Bible says that every word of God shall be confirmed by the mouth of two or three witnesses. It was so interesting. Then we were at a conference, the pastors of our church, you know, we go to a conference every year, and we were at that conference, and the speaker of that conference, a man from Uganda, he, uh, he, he prayed for different ones, and then he, he called me out and pray, started praying for me, and then he said, he started speaking about Amos 9, and he started speaking about a, a, exactly an acceleration. And he started praying for me, laid hands on me, and said, Lord, give him speed. Lord, give him speed. Lord, give him speed. And I, I thought to myself, you know, that's illegal in Australia. No, no that's no, not. <laughs> no, 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 not, not that kind of speed. Amen. But the speed of God. And then, the, and then, and then he started talking about Amos 9 and said, you know, that, that's, your, that's, your, that's your message. That's your word. And I, and I went to the Lord and I said, is it my word? And the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, that's the word for the house. That's a word for the house. That's a word for anyone who comes to the house. It's your word. Touch someone next to you and say, it's your word. 
acceleration, acceleration. But you know, we were, I, I mean, I came across just accidentally, it just, there's this lady, her name is Lana Weiser or something like that. She's an Australian lady. Having, she has a great ministry in the United States. I, I had not known that lady before. And, and, and I came across that lady. Apparently, she's, she does hear a lot from the Lord. And in that interview, I just came across it. Nobody told me to go there. I just came across it. And she said, you know, I was praying, and the Lord, I felt the Lord say to me that in 2019, He's going to bring acceleration. I, I shouted. I was looking. I shouted to my wife. I said, Alexandra, come here. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. You know, a prophecy about acceleration. It was so interesting. Just two or three days ago, I was... You know, our church, our Empower Bible Institute is connected, a Bible college is, is connected with Victory Bible Institute in the United States, and so we have a connection with them. And so I was just, I just told my wife, I'm just going to see what Paul is saying. Paul is the pastor of that church. I see what the Lord is speaking to him, and the moment I opened up the computer on YouTube, the, the title of his message was, The Year of Acceleration. I shouted again, Alexandra, come. And I'm shouting to you today, come, come listen. God is saying to us, acceleration. I'm bringing things to pass, you know, in a much faster rate than ever before. Amen. Things are going to speed up and you will find momentum for your life again. It won't be in your strength, but we, you will have to learn what it is to rely on the strength and the grace of God. You're going to be in stock. You're going to reach your destination. God's going to break delay. God's going to bring acceleration into your life. You have been walking through mud as it were, but He's going to put your feet on a rock and you're going to run fast. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 40 verse 2, it said, you know, this is what the psalmist said. Not that one. The psalmist. 42, he says, he has also brought me out of a horrible pit. Out of the miry clay. Have you ever walked through clay? I remember when I was a little kid, I, I decided with my uh, uh, sister to go for a walk. Uh, and in and, and an area, there was, there, was, there was, in Europe it rains a lot. <laughs> and I said, I said well, we're going to go up this mountain. So we started going and, and we started getting bogged in, in mud. I mean, it got so bad, I had mud right up to my, you know, knees. And, and she's crying. She's like completely stuck. Oh, brother, you're crazy. You know? I'm like, no, I'll help you. And so I had to bring her up and full of mud. I'll never, I never forgot that day that we went out for a walk. And how hard it is to walk through mud, you know. Sometimes, it, I don't know, it may have been, it may be that you felt that 2018, it's, it, it was hard going, hard walking. You wanted to run, but you couldn't run. You wanted to make progress, but you couldn't. There was one thing or the other. It, it may, that, maybe that's how the psalmist felt. He, in actual fact, he was in a horrible pit. He wasn't just in mud up to his knees. He was in mud way over his head. And he said, Lord, and you set my feet upon a rock, and you established my steps. How many of you want your steps to be established on a rock so that you can run and not be weary. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, we're going to run in 2019. Say, I'm going to run. You know, next week I'll be, I'll, I'll bring my sneakers. We, we're going to run. We're going to run. You shall run and not grow weary because you, it won't be in your strength but it will be in His strength. It's not going to be in your power, but it's going to be in His grace. By His grace. God's going to grace you to run. You know, a bit like the, the, in Isaiah 19, Elijah was, he was depressed, oppressed. He was in a horrible pit. He was inside a cave. He was talking to God about taking his life. And, and then the Bible says, that, that an angel fed him. And with the strength of that food, the, it says that he ran 40 days and nights. Oh, I like that. You know, when the strength of God comes upon you, you run with that strength. 40 days and nights, he ran. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you need that kind of strength? Oh, hallelujah. I'm like, you know, I'm in my 50s now. I'm like, God, I'm more and more, I need strength. And more and more, it's got to be supernatural strength. <laughs> you know, I went to the gym and 
Yeah, I can do this. You know, all those bulky guys in their 20s. So I'm like, yeah, just what's this? You know, another one, another one, you know, all these weights. I used to be able to do this. Oh, so I got up and like, a bit more stretches, you know. <laughs> Got there. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh no, all these guys are looking. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, I'm shaking my. <laughs> and then I quickly put it back and left and just went to the bathroom and just to forget about it. <laughs> Two weeks later, Dr. Lum, I've got a horrible pain in my, yeah, that's called tendonitis. What does that, yeah, it, it, it explains. <laughs> you have to get a physio. Anyway, more and more, we need the strength of God, amen. <laughs> but God's grace is sufficient for us. Not to do crazy things like that, but God's grace is sufficient for us. Amos chapter 9, verse 13. Now, this is our scripture, okay? Here we go. You, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree. Who's saying this? God. Whose decree is it? God. It's God is saying, God is saying, things are going to happen so fast that your head will swim one thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. And wherever, wherever, and everything will happen at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Everywhere you look, favor. Everywhere you look, blessings. Everyone say blessings. The disciples are in the middle of the sea. They're in the middle of the storm. But when they looked, there was Jesus coming on the water. This year, when you look, there'll be Jesus coming to rescue you, to strengthen you, to help you, to, oh, hallelujah. To come into your boat and take it to where you're going much faster. Wherever you look, look for Jesus. Look for blessings. You know, Amos. That's what, Amos, that's what the Bible says in Amos. Now, a literal translation, of course, this is, this is a paraphrase, but the literal translation says in verse 13, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treather of grapes, him who sows seed. I mean, that's fast. That's a miracle. That's God overriding natural seasons and natural laws. Can you imagine? The guy is sowing the seed, but this, this thing is happening so fast that the reaper is already, you know, going ahead and reaping the harvest even before the seed. I mean, how many of you understand that, that naturally that there's, a, there's a natural progression of things, but supernaturally God can accelerate natural processes. God can accelerate what would take a season, what would take a year, what would take months. God can accelerate to the point that you're going to be amazed and surprised and your head will swim like one thing after the other, like me the message says it's in the Bible <laughs> amen church come on it's in the Bible it's in the Bible God overriding natural laws if you're tired of delay of being stuck then this is your promise for 2019 and like with any promise as I said to you the Lord spoke to me and said it needs to be believed it needs to be believed Maybe some single ladies like, God, where's the man with the shiny armor? The Lord is saying, he's coming. Whatever you look, blessings. Do a lot of looking. They'll turn up. Amen. <laughs> I didn't hear any amens from the single people in the house. Uh, keep looking. Praise God. Now, let me, let me just identify with you in the closing moments of this service, three causes of delay. Sometimes there is delay. And there are three causes of delay. Number one, spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Why do things delay? Have you ever wondered, why, do things, why are things taking so long? Lord, I prayed about this, but why has it taken so long? How many of you have prayed prayers like that? Come on, help me preach here today. Wave at me like you're really awake. And Yeah, good. <laughs> I know you're awake, but uh, just checking. Number one, spiritual warfare. 
You know, the, the, the winds that came over that lake when the disciples were right in the middle of the ocean. They were not just, I mean, these were experienced fishermen. They knew what winds were like. They, they could put up with normal, natural winds. But this was a different kind of wind. In, in chapter 4 of Mark, you know, th that storm that came against them happened just before they were reached that community of the Gadarenes where there was a man possessed with demons. And then you know what? That, that was demonically orchestrated to delay, to oppose, to hinder, so that Jesus and the disciples would not get to the country of the gatherings, but, but would, would, they would be, you know, uh, uh, they would be hindered and delayed. You know, there, there is, sometimes there are spiritual causes for your delay. You know, in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel, you know, in chapter 10, there's an angel that turned up when Daniel was praying and fasting. And, and the angel said to him, greatly beloved of the Lord, you know, I was from the first day that you set your face to seek my face, I was sent to you. Because of your words, I was sent to you. But then he starts describing it. There was war in the heavenlies. The principality that was over Persia. He said, he would stood me. In other words, he opposed me. He hindered me. He came against me. He, 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 there was war in the heavenlies. This messenger of God is bringing the answer. The first day that he prayed, God sent the answer. Why did he get it the first day that he prayed? Because there was warfare in the heavenlies. In the invisible realm, there were demonic forces. There were principalities opposing, you know, the arrival of the answer. And, and, and God had to send Michael, the archangel. And, 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 and then Michael, then there was a breakthrough. And on the 21st day of his fast, then the angel finally arrived before Daniel. And he said, because of your words, I was sent to you. But he was sent 21 days ago. You know, one of the things that the enemy does, the enemy is trying to get you to give up. The, en the enemy is trying to you to get you to throw the towel, to stop believing, to say, well, that was a good word, Pastor Luis, but it's not for me. Maybe it's for someone else because it's not happening in my life. I want to encourage you, don't stop. If you have to fast, you have to pray, you stay, you stay. You, you, you. The Bible says, having done all to stand, stand. Stand, therefore. Sometimes we need to stand. The Bible says, stand against the wiles of the devil. You know, that's the name of the game is stand. Yeah. Hallelujah, stand. You know, 1 Thessalonians 2.18, th th this is what the Apostle Paul said, Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul. Listen, this happens to everybody, even the great Apostle Paul, even I, Paul. A time and time again, but Satan hindered us. He got discernment that the delay he was experiencing was because of the opposition that, he was, uh, that was happening behind the scenes. Satan was hindering the purposes of God. Actually, the word in Greek for hind, to hinder is actually, literally it means to hit an impasse. Something that has is, is got motion but then stops, it kind of hits an impasse and doesn't move forward. You know, that's what the enemy does. So number one, the first cause for delay is spiritual. The second cause of delay has to do with us sometimes. Because, you know, sometimes of our own bad decisions. Okay, most of the time, let's blame the devil. <laughs> But uh, let me tell you something. Sometimes we are the reason why there's delay. You know, sometimes there's, there's decisions we make that, that, that cause delay. Bad decisions in life. Look, uh, the, the people of Israel, they were, they were released. God set them free from, from, Israel, from uh, Israel out of Egypt with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. Why did it take them 40 years to get to the promised land? And actually they didn't. Just a handful of them got there. Joshua and, and Caleb and, and that kind of generation. Why the delay? Because of their rebellion. Because of their stubbornness. Because of one bad decision after another bad decision. So going around the mountain over and over and over and over again. And their, their story became just a story. Of just, it, it was just the summary of all a whole lot of bad decisions. That's, that's the story of their lives. Just bad decisions. And guess what? 40 years. What could have taken maybe weeks or, or even a month. 
It took them 40 years. Delay. Delay can come because of bad decisions we make. I know people that they keep on making bad decisions, same old mistakes, going around the mountain, seeing it again, and doing the same thing over and over again. And I want you to know something. You may be the key to your own acceleration, to your own breakthrough, to you coming out of that. Amen. Make good decisions. Hallelujah. So bad decisions. Look at Jonah. Jonah had a purpose. God had a purpose for Jonah and a, and a blessing for that man. But you know, Jonah went around the bee. I mean, just went, oh, now God resisting. His decision was, no, God, I don't want to preach to Nineveh. To Nineveh. No, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. No, 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 no. The, it, and because of his bad decision, the preaching of the gospel to, the, to Nineveh was delayed until he found himself in the stomach of a stinky fish. <laughs> we don't know whether it was a whale. It was, certainly wasn't a sardine. But it was a big fish. And some people, sometimes they kind of only learn kind of the hard way. They have to go around the long way and find it, find the wrong, you know, learn the hard way. You know, that can be the cause of delay. Number three, the choices of others. You know, sometimes we can get stuck for no fault of our own. Sometimes we can be held back by the choices that others make. By choices that others make. You know, I'll, I'll give you an example. For instance, Joseph. Joseph, he had a dream. He had a great promise over his life. However, the malicious choices of his brothers sent Joseph to slavery and imprisonment. You know, Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a vision. Joseph had a prophecy. Joseph had a plan. But you look at the life of Joseph and, and there was delay, delay, delay. He's in the prison. He's interpreting dreams for everybody else. And Joseph is like, well, when will I get out of this pit? When will my day come? But then the Bible says, the Bible shows us two things about Joseph. Number one, Joseph never gave up on his dreams. Joseph kept the dreams going in his mind. Joseph kept working on other people's dreams. Joseph kept believing the dream for his life. The other thing about Joseph is that Joseph... You know what? He never became bitter towards his brothers, but Joseph kept a forgiving heart towards his brothers. And you know what? The Bible says that in one day, in one day, everyone say one day, Joseph went from the pit of that prison to the palace of Pharaoh. One day, one day. I mean, that's acceleration. That's acceleration. One day. You know, God lives outside time. Things that could take generations or decades, God can do it in one day. Everyone say one day. Hallelujah. You know, one day, 70 years ago, Israel became a nation in one day. How can that happen? How can a nation come into existence? It happened 70 years ago. It was prophesied in Isaiah 66, verse, verse uh, 8. It says, who has heard such a thing? I mean, who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? I mean, Pastor Lewis, who has heard such a thing? You know, what, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this. Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That, that is fast. That is acceleration one day. Everyone say one day. One day. You know, God doesn't... When you come into a season of acceleration, what could take years or generations, God can do it in one instant. Immediately. Instantly. Amen. In one day. In one minute. You know, Pastor, Pastor Daphne, she was in the first service. Pastor Daphne, she, she said, she was in a, in a staff meeting. She said, Pastor Luis, you know, uh, she was telling the past. She was testifying. She said, I, I had this thing in my back. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I went to my son-in-law, who was a doctor, Victor. And I asked him, Victor, you know what's wrong with me? And Victor said, well, it's going to take a few weeks for you to come right. And she said, but I heard Pastor Lewis preach to the pastors about acceleration. And I thought to myself, why should I put up with this for weeks? And she believed the promise of God. And she said, what would take weeks, boom, was gone in one day. Amen. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. Hallelujah. 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 You know, at the end of the service last week, there was a couple that 
came to me, they were in the first service and they said, Pastor, as you know, I, I said, oh, good to see you back from your holiday. How was it? They, they, said, they said, the holiday was beautiful, but something bad really happened. My wife's jewelry is all gone. We took it with us and it's all gone. And I prayed with them over here. And I said, I, I said, devil, give it back to them. Give it back to them in Jesus' name. That was my prayer. Give it back to them. I got home at about four o'clock in the afternoon. I got a text from this couple. They were here in the first service. They said, Pastor Luis, you would not believe this. Her bag. I mean, that's the first place you go to, to find things, you know. <laughs> Ladies have everything in their bags. We've searched. We had seen that bag like tons of times. It wasn't there. We got home, went to the same bag, and it's all there. Come on! I'm like, wow! Praise God! I mean, that was a quick answer to prayer. It's not like 50, you know, a year later, we're doing some spring cleaning, and we found the jewels that, you know, behind, you know, piece of furniture. No! I said, devil, give it back! Give it back! Give it back! A few hours later, it was there. They're happy again. Hallelujah. And the husband is very happy. He doesn't have to buy all those jewels again. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Acceleration. In one day, acceleration. Now, let me just say this as well. Joseph, while a prisoner, he had no option. As too was part of his life. But perhaps you have that choice. Do you realize that Joseph was a prisoner? He had no choice about who was part of his life. He was in a prison with those guys. His brothers put him in prison. And the choice of their brothers caused the plan of God to be delayed in his life. But maybe you have that choice. Maybe there are people in your life, they're slowing you down and they don't belong in your life. You know, I want you to know something. We have to be careful with our associations. Do the people that surround you propel you forward and run with you? Or do they pull you back and want to hold you back and want to keep you from running the race that He set before you? And I want to encourage you, you know what? You can do something about your acceleration in 2019. Maybe there's some people that God needs to weed out, amen, to make room for the kind of people that God wants to bring into your life so that you will run unhindered, so that you run with people that run, so that you, you run with people that have a vision, hallelujah, so that you run with people that will build you up and lift you up and encourage you, hallelujah. Amen. If there are people in your life that are holding you back, that make you stumble, that are hindrance, then you know what? Choose your associations. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, in conclusion, you know, we've got much to say and we're going to cover it over the next four. How many of you are glad we're covering this? How many of you believe we're going somewhere in 2019? Hallelujah. There is more. There is more. Wait, there is more. Come next week. There is more. Hallelujah. But I want to encourage you. You know, um, your word for 2019 is it's your season of acceleration. The enemy bad decisions or others may have slowed you down but this is the season that God is breaking delay this is the season to get unstuck and move forward this is the season to get out of the pit of Mary clay this is the year to run and not grow weary this is the year to experience rapid answers to prayers to make progress to gain momentum in 2019 God is breaking delay. Say that with me. God is breaking delay. Amen. You're coming out of the storm. Maybe you feel like you've lost time. God will make up for lost time. Accelerate spiritually and advance in 2019. Welcome to your season of acceleration. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God praise. Come on. Hallelujah.